Yo, what's up? This video is a guide about Ancestral War Chief Chieftain and I originally played this in Hardcore Metamorph and recently ripped. Uh, let's see. Hardcore Metamorph. Here I am, rank 5. Um, I died to some shitty detonate mechanic. Originally, I wanted to shoot the video after going for Cyrus. Um, that's the only boss that I didn't kill with this character. I was trying to level to 96, but I died, so I decided to make the video now. So this is, yes, a um, hardcore viable build. And there are lots of other people who are playing this build. Most of them are dead. Um, only this guy is alive. So it's a very chieftain. Um, let's say um, chieftain isn't something that most people plays in softcore league for some reason I don't know, but in hardcore it is, I believe, more popular. Uh, most people place strength stacking builds with chieftain, um, thanks to this um, ascension node that has 10% increased strength. So Shifton has a very good potential of, you know, making builds with um, strength stacking. And this is another strength stacking build using Brutus Lead Sprinkler. So it says adds 4 to 7 fire damage to attacks with this weapon per 10th strength. Um, strength. So Ancestral Warship is a um, attack totem. So Anything you scale with, you know, anything that is related to attacks buffs us, basically. So, let's see. My current strength, um, it is actually low compared to other players. Because it is very hard to find um, good gear in hardcore. Uh, I crafted some pieces myself. So, if you are going to do this on softcore, um, you are going to have a way better gear uh, than me. And you can easily get up to 1500, even higher strength. So you can even increase your damage and HP uh, because two strength equals to one life. So you can even, you know, build up a better character than mine. So the higher the strength, the more fire damage you will have on your attacks, which means ancestral warships. So this is the core item for this build. Uh, it isn't that expensive, only like 20 chaos in hardcore, um, probably cheaper in softcore. So you want strength, uh, fire damage, elemental damage with attacks, uh, fire penetration, those kind of things uh, to buff your damage. So I am playing crit, critical version, so currently I have like 46 crit and 350 multiplier. So the multiplier is actually low uh, because it is hard to get multipliers on a mace build. Um, if this was a sword build, which you cannot do because this is the weapon we are using, you can go of course more multiplier, but on a mace it is very hard to scale multiplier. But again on um, softcore uh, you can do a better character so it can go up to 400 uh, crit multiplier. So you can even increase your damage higher. So I'm gonna go over Path of um, Haste Bin. Uh, yeah, Path of Healing, yeah. Um, later in the video, but let's see the DPS. Let's take a look at it very quick. So this is my current DPS against um, Shaper and Guardian, those kind of end game bosses. So 1 million per totem. So we have three totems, so we also have Ancestral Protectors, which I'm going to talk about. They deal a little damage also, so we have two of these, almost 200k each. So that makes like 350, let's say, k DPS for those Protectors. And also three Ancestral War Chiefs, so 3 million. That, that makes almost 3.5 million DPS against Shaper and Guardian and Cyrus, all of those. Um, and game bosses. So the DPS is more than 3 million with my gear. 
you can easily go above 4 million if you have a better gear. So the damage is um, more than enough for every kind of boss and content in the game. So let's go over the gear and I will also give some tips on how to craft some of the pieces. So this is about the weapon. So for shield you need to increase your maximum number of totems. So there are only a couple of items in the game that is that can increase your totem number. Um, shield is one of those. So you have two options for a shield. So one is a rare shield with um, sh a shaped influence. As you can see it has a background with stars. This, this is more clear now. So this is a shaped item. And no, oh, I just realized that I need this deck already. <laughs> I cannot equip it now. Uh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> ignore that. <laughs> so you want plus totem uh, summon totems on your shield. You can craft this on your own and multi mode if you want. Um, this is the best I could find on the market on hardcore. So you basically want summon totems, life. Um, attack speed if you can, which is very good, but most of the time um, I believe it is hard to find attack speed. And some resist if you need, and of course strength. So again, um, hardcore market is um, very poor, let's say. There aren't much items on the market. So this is the best I could find and afford. So basically you want more life and maybe strength on it so it can be better and also probably an armor based shield so this is an evasion based so probably an armor based shield is better you can also play with Tukuhama's fortress this is a unique item this has more life it is an armor based Again, plus one maximum number of summon totems. And you also get 300 armor per summon totem. So you have, mm, let me go back to town and equip this somehow. So you will have lots of um, totems, uh, three ancestral war chiefs and two protectors. All right, I'm back. I equipped my shield. <laughs> so you can summon three ancestral war chiefs and two protectors which makes five totems so this shield gives you 1500 armor total so it is very good mitigation of course and other things about this shield it gives blood magic keystone which is here so this means you don't have any mana and you spend life instead of mana for skills. So this means that you cannot reserve anything as a buff or anything like that. But they added this a couple of leagues ago. Um, this shield also gives that, so you don't need to get this. So you only get these um, for more life, you know, 20% increased life. If you are planning on playing this shield. So it already gives blood magic, but you want these life nodes here. So you basically pick these three. So what does this do? You can only have one non-banner aura with no duration. So this means that you can get, um, if you want anger, or if you are on hardcore, uh, flesh and stone is probably a better idea. So you can only get one aura. And it will be free. So with blood magic, that makes you have a um, higher health pool because of these nodes. You will probably have more armor, but if you have a very good rare shaped shield, you can have a better armor um, than this shield. But it's overall more suited for um, hardcore, I believe. But I refuse to play with that because I played lots of Ancestral War Chiefs 
um, in the past and uh, that shield was like the core item back then so I didn't want to play with that again and also I am using lots of buffs because I'm playing crit crit build I also need precision flash and stone for defensive uh, which I'm gonna talk about soon and anger so I didn't want to use that shield but feel free to play with this and you can only get one aura I'm, I'm telling again so you can also go with that so that's for the shield other pieces aren't that complicated um, so for helmet you want life um, resist maybe accuracy so you need at least one piece with accuracy if you are playing critical build uh, I'm gonna um, post two different pace pins one is gonna be critical build the one I played the other will be resolute technique so without critical so if you are playing with critical um, accuracy is something that you can put on your helm but as you noticed maybe um, my helm uh, don't have strength on it so it is one of the bad um, sides of playing uh, on hardcore there are like two helmets on the market that could be a potential upgrade to me and they lack um, resistance uh, mostly so I couldn't buy them so I cannot get strength on my helmet uh, so the ideal helmet will be um, ha um, life uh, resist if you want uh, physical damage from hits taken as fire this is very important for more mitigation uh, you can also get this one from crafting bench but uh, you need to unveil it if you are playing in the league so let's say you are you just started in a fresh league so you don't have that um, on your craft bench so you need to unveil that when having um, Corel let me show you that guy maybe I'm not sure if I have it because this is standard um, so I have no idea so you need to have that guy in your team otherwise uh, in your syndicate um, let's see yeah this guy so you need to have Corel Goya on the syndicate member you know think uh, otherwise you cannot unveil that mode so if you have that on your craft bench you can actually get a helm without the mitigation and only focus on life resist and strength and then craft it yourself let's see if I have it let's type fire yeah this one so it is a little expensive the tier 1 and it is 2% lower than this so this is actually an item from I believe um, Alva Temple of Azotl so it is a little hard to find these on the market with um, correct stats so yeah that's about it with the helmet and let's talk about it uh, while we are at the helmet so we already have yeah this one 10% additional physical damage from hits taken as fired so that makes 20% and our fire resistance is 77 which is higher than usual so this helmet with combined with this provides a big um, physical mitigation so it is very important to survive against physical damage and also this keystone the ascension node here um, if we read the bottom text unaffected by ignite so normally if you get it while we are wearing this helm or using this keystone you are supposed to get ignited because you get hit by a fire damage instead of physical so with this keystone you are also unaffected by ignite which means that you are still gonna get ignited but that won't damage you at all so you are basically ignite immune 
by playing a chieftain so which is very good so for some maps let's say there is a map mod also um, it says something like monsters always ignites with hits so you won't get ignite at all in those kind of maps and also one of the elder guardians I believe it was purifier I believe it is purifier but I may be wrong so that guy also ignites and that guy's ignites are very serious um, you can easily die to that guy so you are basically immune again um, so being ignite immune is very important in some scenarios so keep that in mind so for amulet Zof's blood so this amulet gives lots of good stuff so first of all it's an ember amulet so strength or more strength stacking and percentage strength life some fire resist 10% fire penetration cover enemies in ash it is useless um, we already cover enemies in on um, in ash with this here 20% chance and it is on hit here this one isn't on hit it is when they hit you so this is basically useless and avatar of fire keystone which is here so you don't need to get this one the amulet gives it they should actually improve the system so it should be highlighted it still says unallocated but we have it already so they should improve that uh, for new players mostly because if you are not a new player it is really really frustrating so we already have this by using this one this amulet so it converts 50% of physical cold lightning all other damage types to um, not chaos only physical cold and lightning to fire damage 50% and you will deal no non-fire damage so what that means if you get let's say a hundred physical damage from somewhere 50% will get converted and the other 50% will be gone so it will go waste but it isn't important so this weapon has some flat physical on it so that 50% will be converted and the other rest is gonna disappear so it doesn't matter so this is just a little bonus so avatar of fire yes a little useful but this is not the reason that we are using the amulet so the other stuff is more than enough it's the strength life and 10 percent fire penetration which is very important against elites and bosses so make sure you also use instinct um, maybe i pronounced it wrong <laughs> um, i will post a picture on the screen so use that catalyst to increase the attributes even higher so I'm not sure if catalysts will be in the core game but yeah I, be, I hope they will go in core because they provide lots of utility and also you can use catalyst on your rings and belts so increase that strength numbers even more I don't have it on my rings because they are a little expensive so I didn't invest I tried to use some on my belt so let's keep going so for body armor you want again a, um, probably armor based yeah that is the best choice of course so you need to get more strength so actually you can have a better body armor easily in softcore so the strength I have is tier 7 which is very bad you also need percentage strength strength 12% um, so that is tier 1 and if you have an open suffix you can also craft increased attributes to increase your strength even higher I have cold resist on it so I couldn't do that so if you are trying to you know maximize your strength make sure you find the body armor with open suffix and craft attributes on it so it will increase your strength even higher 
So other stuff to look for is of course life and maybe armor. If you can get a um, body armor like this, you can craft maximum life like I did. So it is also very good. And um, I forgot to say, you can get percentage strength on elder base and hunter base. So if you are gonna craft it yourself, watch out for that. So for rings, try to get missing stats if you need, and then strength. So this ring is very very insane actually for hardcore standards. Um, I bought this one for one exalt and slammed the tier one physical, uh, which some of it um, converted to fire of course, so it is better than nothing. So try getting life um, resist if you need, uh, lots of strength, and get at least accuracy on one of your rings because it is very important to increase your hit chance. I currently have 96%. If I take this ring off, you can see it drops like 7%, which is huge. So try to get a decent accuracy on one of your rings at least, and I also have some on my helm. So if you can, um, helmet isn't op um, optimal. Uh, don't try to get accuracy, try to get that strength and the missing resist maybe. Try to get decent um, accuracy on your rings. That will probably cap you because this is like 200 accuracy, so you can have more than 400 on your rings. So if I have another 400 here instead of this, I will probably have like 96-99% and that is almost capped, so that, that should be enough. So accuracy is very important. For the other ring, I needed some dexterity. Normally, you don't need this much dexterity. I have evasion based shield, which you shouldn't get. Try to get an armor one. So, you will probably need uh, 111 dexterity for your support gems. So, try to get that dexterity and try to get strength on your diamond. Actually, not, it doesn't have to be diamond ring. Um, on your ring. Try to get strength instead of dexterity to increase your damage and life even more. Um, I have flammability curse on my ring. Um, it is of course good um, against bosses but it is only level 5. So yeah it makes some difference but you can absolutely absolutely um, drop this you know pass on this and get a very good ring with high life, resist, strength, maybe accuracy, maybe a better elemental damage attack roll. You can even use opal rings and craft it yourself with um, essence of rage, yeah, with uh, st you know the strength one. Let's see, yeah, so the shrieking ones gives almost 50 strength if you are rich, you know, if you can um, afford it, min maxing your character. You can even use deepenings and that should be like 55 strength. So craft your own rings, maybe opal rings, yeah. So as I said at the start of the video, you can easily get at least um, 1500 strength so it is very possible for more DPS and life so gloves again um, I don't have strength there aren't any gloves on the hardcore market that is um, suited you know for my needs uh, the hardcore market is very dead <laughs> so I crafted this myself I was trying to get strength, of course, by, but I got attack speed instead, so I decided to use this. So spike gloves are good because they have melee damage implicit, so get one with get um, spike gloves. Um, if you are gonna craft it yourself, I uh, wanted some chaos resist. It is very important 
these days because the new conqueror Alhazmin um, deals cast damage. So cast damage is like something that you encounter every day. Um, it wasn't like you know pre 3.9. So cast resist is more important these days. And I'm playing in hardcore, so yeah. So I crafted it with um, essence of envy to get that chaos resist. But you can again craft it with rage for strength. If you are on soft core, you can play with a little less chaos resist. So you can have a glows with strength, life, other resist. If you are lucky, again attack speed. Or if you can craft attack speed if you have uh, open suffix. So yeah, all of those kind of stuff. Uh, you can also craft warlord base gloves and get additional mana damage as a prefix, I believe, or even get uh, let's see. Plus weapon range is a, is an option, but um, it isn't that important. Um, what else? There was like plus one to frenzy charges, but yeah, that isn't very useful for this build because we are not generating frenzy charges. And there is also calling strike, uh, which can be good, but we are already. We already have Culling Strike on the Ancestral Protectors, so this is always up on bosses. So that can help while mapping, but it shouldn't be something that um, you need strictly. Yeah. So focus on that attack speed, strength, and melee damage, and you are good to go. So for belt, I crafted this myself with alterations and slammed once with exalted and slammed once with uh, leo bench i'm gonna give you five seconds to guess those two slams that i did <laughs> it shouldn't be that hard all right time's up my first slam was stun and block recovery and the other one was tier 8 armor yeah, my luck. <laughs> so what you want is you need a hunter or elder base heavy belt. Heavy belt is for strength, of course. And then you keep using alterations or again maybe essence of rage. But I found alterations um, let's say easier to craft. I used like maybe 20 essences and didn't even see the attribute suffix once. So I decided to use alterations and it took me like 400 alterations to get this. And uh, you see the attribute and maybe high strength most of the time but usually fail at the regal, regal orb, you know. So I believe it is very mm, easier craft with heavy belt but it is of course RNG and you know luck based so feel free to craft it maybe there are better ways I don't know but alteration seems to work fine for me so you need to get some life strength and attribute on your belt and then you can you know maybe exalt slam or something like that and remember to craft elemental damage with attacks as a prefix if you get a similar and try to use that catalyst so you increase the strength even higher so one thing about catalysts i didn't know that until i crafted this belt so each time you use an augment so you can see there are lots of explanation tool tip you know information here you can see that the item's catalyst quality increases the chance of applying a modifier which matches the quality type removes 2% quality applied by catalysts on use. So I didn't know this until I started crafting with alterations then I noticed that I lost all my um, quality. So I originally used 4 um, catalysts on this 
because it is easier to you know increase the quality when the item is normal white you know but each time you use augmentation it decreases by two percent so if you are min maxing your character if you are rich you know you can use the, that catalyst to get you know increased chance of getting strength while crafting so keep that in mind so in the end you will probably have zero quality left so you need to use 20 catalysts like I was trying to do so I have got only 12 so this is why the belt has 12 quality and boots so Alberon's warpath is a budget option it has percentage strength so if you are gonna play with this one make sure you get a maximum roll with 18% it also has some chaos resist and moon speed. The other stuff is useless. Make sure you get um, labyrinth enchant, you know, critical strike chance or penetration. You can also get regeneration when you get hit. That is also good for hardcore. But our healing is very high. Um, so I don't think that is very important. So critical strike chance is very good. And also penetration is good for bosses, so keep that in mind. If you are not playing critical build, go for penetration. So instead, Alberon, there is a high budget high budget option, which I was planning to do, but I died, so there's no option for me now. So boots on Hunter base, you can get percentage strength, strength um, suffix. And also, of course, you can get normal strength. So you can craft a very good boot on hunter bases. So if you want to try, good luck with that. You can also get life. Um, these boots don't have life. And even get more movement speed. So a rare boot uh, should be better if you can craft it or find it maybe on the market. So that's about the items. Uh, we'll talk about jewels on the talent tree. So about flasks. A life flask um, with bleeding, so staunching. You can also use an instant one. Um, I use normal, you know, recovery, but instant also works fine. But our health pool is very high, so instant won't heal you that much. So this was my, you know, um, my choice. You can also use um, maybe Blood of the Curry if you have a Corrupted Blood Jewel. But you don't get Corrupted Blood that often, but in Hardcore you don't want to, you know, take that risk. So a Bleed Flask is good. But on Softcore you can get a Corrupt Blood Jewel in case that you get some corrupt blood on you and use a blood of curry or don't use a life flask at all maybe because no, most of the time you don't need that life flask our uh, regeneration and leech that I'm gonna talk about soon in the talent tree so we get leech from our totems 1% of damage dealt by our totems is leeched you as life so we have a very high recovery so you don't use life flask that much so keep that in mind most of the times I don't press this at all in a map so yeah that is how much recovery you can get from that leech and regeneration so you can pass life flask entirely if you are playing on softcore and use a battle fade instead to increase your damage even higher Diamond Flask, if you are playing Critical Build, go for Diamond Flask. Make sure you roll Curse or Freeze on it. You can also, if you are using a Rare Boots, you know, Hunter Boots that I talked earlier, you can craft maybe Freeze Immune on that. So you don't need Freeze Flask at all if you can do that. So Curse and Freeze on your Flasks, uh, Granite for more mitigation. And also it increases the, you know, let's see, we have 
1600 absorb at the moment but with higher um, armor it's gonna get increased now we have 3200 so I'm gonna talk about gems after this so grand flask for more mitigation and absorption silver flask to increase that attack speed so shock immunity is also very good so make sure you get shock on one of your items and um, flasks so about mana flask so you can actually drop this by increasing your clarity higher and maybe using enlighten to decrease the, the cost I don't have enlighten so at the moment you can see I almost lost all my mana by planting all the totems and the regeneration takes some time because we don't have any regeneration on the tree it is not possible to get on a marauder tree very easily and our items in the jewelry needs like lots of strength and accuracy those kind of suffix so you cannot put regeneration anywhere but if you have good rings already with open prefix you can craft um, plus 10 non-channeling cost reduce so that will reduce the cost a lot so that way you can drop mana flask so keep that in mind mana flask isn't something that you want actually but this is how I had to play because I was in hardcore so couldn't find those good items to craft minus 10 cost mana cost all right but if you have to use mana flask make sure you craft with flask effect is not removed as full mana and put something useful on it I had movement speed you can also put curse immune or freeze immune something like that on here so you will pretty, pretty much you know be immune all the time because mana flasks are like almost endless you have five uses and each use is for like five seconds so when you use the mana flask it is up all the time whatever you put on your uh, flask so it is very good so let's talk about gems and then talent tree and finally path of building so on your ancestral war chief make sure you get a wall ancestral war chief and if you have the money go for a one with quality you can probably also find you know 21 to 20 or something like that on softcore easily if you have the money so go for it so the quality increases the totem damage so it is good elemental damage with attacks because this is an elemental build uh, you can also use a vacant elemental damage with attacks if you have the money ruthless to increase that mana damage on every third blow damage on full life as I said earlier our regeneration and leech is very high so even if you get hit by something you immediately go to full health in a second so you are on full health most of the time so this works um, almost a hundred percent uptime so very huge damage bonus pulverize this is for mapping make sure you have Vorichi on your here yeah research and craft white sockets on your body armor one is enough so you need to switch pulverize with concentrated effect for hard bosses like conquerors um, shaper guardians shaper elder all of all those kind of hard bosses so pulverize has 34% increased area effect to help us clear the maps easily easier but also it has a lot of more melee area damage so this gives a lot of damage but it gives 15% less attack speed so as you can see our attack speed per time and um, per second so each attack has like uh, 0 0.47 second time but if we switch the jumps uh, we say you know 0 0.07 seconds so you are faster 
without this. So there is no downside of using concentrated effect. It also, uh, only reduces the area effect, which isn't something you want on bosses, single target bosses. So concentrated effect is more powerful, as you can already tell from the tooltip. Once we use polarize, our DPS goes down. So this is for mapping, this is for bossing. Craft that white socket and you are good to go. And finally elemental focus for more elemental damage. There is also an awakened elemental focus, so use that when you have the money. So other stuff for mobility shield charge, fortify, blood magic and faster attacks. So shield charge is your best option as a movement skill. Um, other options are, you know, Leap Slam, but Leap Slam is slower. Um, I tried to play with it at start, but it is very slow compared to Shield Charge, so I don't, I don't recommend it. Go with Shield Charge. Make sure you have Flame Dash somewhere to climb those cliffs, and it is useful in Labyrinth. So get a Flame Dash somewhere. Do not level it, to, because it will increase the mana cost. Just leave it at 1. You don't use this all the time, you just use it to climb, you know, and go through um, cliffs, you know, holes, those kind of stuff. So let's see, Molten Shell and Increased Duration. You should normally use Wild Molten Shell, um, but I only have one button available and I am, uh, you know, more comfortable with playing with right, uh, moving with right uh, click. Because you already do all the loot with your left click. And if I also move with left click, I don't feel comfortable playing like that. So I don't have any buttons. Um, if you can also use this one or something, maybe totem. And use a valve motion shell here. So you normally have the support, but I didn't do that. You can also use that here if you can press quickly, you know, control. So make sure you use wild molten shell if you can. Otherwise, just use a regular one. So once you pop this with your flask, you get some huge absorption. Depends on your armor. So the higher the armor, and also you will have more armor. So we have a little more shield with our totems that comes from here. 100% um, no, 100 armor per summon totem. Yeah. If you are also playing with Tokohama, you will even get more armor per totem. So it's a very good mitigation. So make sure you press this all the time while you are moving. You can do that. It doesn't have any cast or anything and only has a little cooldown once it is over so you can press it like this without even getting interrupted at all so flesh and stone as a buff our buffs are yeah let's talk about the buffs first so anger for you know more fire damage you can drop this if you have higher strength and focus on other stuff I was normally planning on using Aspect of the Spider instead of Anger and of course Anger is 50% reservation, Spider is 25 so I will save like 25% and I was gonna use that mana for increasing precision and clarity and get rid of the mana flask also but I couldn't find any good item to craft Spider on it, I couldn't do that on Hardcore so that is something that you can consider um, if you have higher strength using spider um, all um, let's say gives more damage or, or almost the same damage as anger if you don't don't use um, watcher's eye of course so spider is a very powerful option for both DPS and survival so consider consider that instead of anger and um, increase that level of precision and clarity by doing that. So that is another option. 
So flesh and stone, you need that on sand stance. So if you press it again, it is on blood now, which makes enemies maimed, and you don't need that. You want it on sand stance. So you are in sand stance, nearby enemies are blinded, which is very important. So it reduces their um, accuracy and also crit chance, I believe. So when an enemy is close to you, it will get um, blinded and will probably miss their attacks. So it is very important for mitigation, survival ability. And also you take less damage from enemies which are not nearby. So let's say something hit you from afar, like an archer, archer or maybe another projectile, something like that. You will get less damage. Um, let's see. Where is it? 11% uh, less damage from attacks from enemies that aren't nearby. So it is very good for mitigation, survival ability. So make sure you use flesh and stone. Even if you are in soft core, just use this. It is very important. Um, clarity, uh, you don't need that if you can get rid of that mana flask, as I explained earlier. Earlier. And precision, you can even increase these a little more with higher mana pool. So go for it. Other stuff, cast when damage taken maximum. Steel skin. This is another absorption. So this is on cast when damage taken. So when you, you know, let's see, let's say that we got hit and this proc, and um, molten shell is gonna be on cooldown immediately. So you cannot use both. So if still skin procs, you need to wait a little to use molten shell. But this is another absorption that is proking on its own thanks to cast when damage taken with increased duration. So this was Anger. Ancestral Protector. So normally our totem limit is 3. But if you use multiple totems on your Ancestral Protectors, this is another plus 2 limit. So you can have 5 totems. So what does Ancestral Protector do? This is another totem, of course, not War Chief. Protector is something else. So Ancestral Protector gives you 20% more attack speed. So... Um, yeah, no, yeah. Let's see. Almost half a second attack time, right? With protectors, you can see that we have like 0 0.33 second attack time now, which is very huge. You can see that our DPS is like 318k. Of course, this damage is false. Uh, we are gonna go over that on Path of Building soon. So, that attack speed is very important very huge boost with multiple totems so you can increase that numbers otherwise you cannot use this because your totem limit is 3 and if you try to put one it will delete one of your warships so you need that multiple totems uh, culling strike to call those mobs uh, useful against you know bosses and combustion this is important if you are, um, let's say, I was gonna say crit build, but I believe it can be used on non crit build also because there is like 46 and uh, 49% chance to ignite. Yeah, so you can use combustion on any kind of uh, crit or non crit, it doesn't matter. So once the protector attacks, it has a chance to ignite the target, and once the target is ignited. Um, it will that target will have minus 19% fire resist, which will increase the DPS of both uh, protectors and warships. So it is very important to use combustion. So don't forget that. And that's about the jams. Let's go over the tree and path of building for last. You know. So as ascension, while leveling. I first got Tukohama Wars Herald for that Totem Leech and increased effect of buffs granted by your active ancestor totems, so that is also good. Uh, activation range means that when you place a totem, uh, you need to be 
a little close to your totem otherwise it won't start attacking let's see if you put just like this and then ran immediately that totem won't attack because it needs to you know you need to be in a range to activate it so that increases that range so it is a little you know quality of life improvement maybe uh, so it is good better than nothing and also 25% increased area effect which is good for clear speed so you first need this for that leech so you can you know heal that is very important so I first got this in first labyrinth then you can get this on hardcore if you want later so for you know second labyrinth if you skip this at second labyrinth uh, make sure you get this at third labyrinth before start mapping because this gives you a lot of fire resistance regeneration and also mitigation so it is very important for mapping so make sure you get this one at the second you know cruel or merciless third labyrinth so the other is this one Ramako so this is for uh, more ignite chance actually combined with combustion so a very high chance of igniting, igniting targets for ancestral protector and also 15% fire penetration uh, that is a DPS increase of course and finally at um, Uberlap you will get Hinakora so you will get 10% increased strength which is important and also 20% chance to cover rare or unique enemies unique enemy means bosses of course in Ash so Ash means that Enemies that are covered in Ash have 20% less movement speed and 20% increased fire damage taken. Uh, that is very huge. So this is a very good DPS bonus. So that's about the Ascension. So while leveling, um, you can go here first. And um, make sure, just play with a melee skill until you get Warchief and try to go here as fast as possible to get that plus one totem so you can start playing with totems so you can go with melee damage if you want first get some life regeneration while leveling so you can go here get this two end or one end depending on what you are playing go like this or like this go like this go up and get a totem so Ancestral Warchief is a level 28 uh, gem, the level 1 version of course. So make sure you get this by the time you, have, you are 28. So that is my advice on how to level. Then once you get this, just focus on, you know, life. And, you know, there is a resistance here, which is useful for leveling more life regeneration and strength here some intellect if you need of course these are very good for getting intellect here here these points are also gives intellect so if you are leveling that is important so you don't want to play as fire while leveling because this weapon is like 60 something levels let's see no it isn't what all right that's my bad mm. Actually, you can level with this one, maybe. Because I didn't have the money to buy this, yeah, that's why. So this is only 28 levels. So it seems that this has the same level as Ancestral Warchief. So you can immediately start playing with this one. But while leveling, I'm not sure how much strength you can get. So I won't talk about that. But you can level with this one, it seems. So if you can get some strength, you can level with Brutus Let Sprinkler, yeah. If you don't, uh, here is what I did. Um, use face breakers and play physical. So do not get any of the fire damage stuff on the tree. Just get, you know, these melee physical damage nodes. Um, you can get this attack speed here. Um, don't forget to get the totem nodes here. Do not get critical nodes while leveling. Just get resolute technique. So your hits won't be evaded. Just play as face breaker, a physical build, use a Meginort belt. Uh, what else? Use a Dead Bellow as a helm to get those flat physical numbers up. 
get some rings and amulet with flat um, physical damage and face breakers will carry you through maps then you can get the, that gear with strength if you have money get jobs blood all that kind of stuff before starting mapping and then use brute sled sprinkler and get those fire not you know lava lash um, element limit here galvanic hammer this guy pain forger so this is crit with scepters and maces <coughs> this emboweling critical you know dismembering all that kind of stuff when you started mapping so other stuff to you know notice uh, let's see totemic zeal to increase that placement speed and attack speed all that kind of stuff for totem so uh, you need to rush here as soon as possible to increase that totem placement speed so totem placement speed means this so you will place your totems faster so this is very important make sure you get this as soon as possible while leveling after getting ancestral bond of course and other stuff just you know live uh, some jewels so let's talk about jewels and then finally pet of building yeah. also you know strength stack here which is very important and these are the totem nodes so that's about the three um, for jewels so if you are using anger like I do and if you are playing a crit build you can get one with critical strike multiplier while affected by anger so there is also penetration fire penetration with anger that is also good if you are not playing critical strike you know critical build just go with the penetration one otherwise um, multiplier is I believe it is better um, I don't remember I did the math before but because we are playing a maze build it is very hard to get multiplier so this jewel helps a lot so that is what I did so for other jewels you can get attack speed critical multiplier is very important so get at least you know one critical multiplier on every um, jewel and also get life very important so your main, your main stats will be life uh, critical multiplier uh, you can even go double critical multiplier and also attack speed so these are the most crucial you know most important stats again critical multiplier attack speed life um, crit chance crit multiplier life strength int and I believe that's all the jewels I have yeah there's also a jewel slot here so you can go for that so let's talk about pet of building and I believe that will be it. So this is our um let's see. Yeah, without enabling wall ancestral, this is your basic damage against shaper and guardians. So it is higher when you are mapping, of course. So this is per totem, so each your totem deals 1 million DPS. But if you have Val Ancestral, um, those guys dealing 1 million and your other totems will deal more compared to before because Val Ancestral Warship gives more melee damage. 32% more melee damage, normal Ancestrals gives 18%. So having a wall ancestral and two other normal ancestrals is you know optimal when you are doing a burst to your you know by boss uh, any kind of metamorph maybe a boss you know against bosses so pop one wall ancestral or if you let's say um, I usually use both stacks when I am fighting metamorph because you know metamorph monsters um, spawn spawn lots of monsters after five seconds or so so while ancestral war chiefs have a very good AOE clearing because they have a shockwave attack uh, so it is useful to clear big packs so it also you know gets filled up um, very quickly so just use them while mapping when you you know enter a very crowded area just pop a wall ancestral and it will just destroy everything it is very fun to watch that guy you know destroy everything on the screen 
they are very powerful. So almost 1.3 million DPS for each totem. Of course, this is with concentrated effect. Mine didn't even have quality, so it can even be more. And my gems aren't even, you know, 21. You can go for more strength. So this DPS will probably go above 2 million for each totem if you have a better gear. Let's check how much DPS Battle Fate gives. So if you are on soft core or if you are, you know, if you have more money than me on hardcore, if you are playing, you can even go for more DPS by buying a Battle Fate. So let's tick Battle Fate. Uh, where is it? Yeah, it's fun. Let's see. Boom. <coughs> so you can even get more DPS by using a Battle Fate. Mm. What else? What else? Yeah, these are the damage numbers, and I'm not sure what else to talk about. I think that's it. <coughs> so make sure you, if you are playing the build yourself and trying to check your DPS, uh, you need to get the configuration. Check this one, because we are using damage on full life. So remember to check this. You don't have to check this, because we are used the flask already, so check this one. We have a flask active. Also, you can check this, it doesn't matter. So, Fortify doesn't do anything for DPS. Um, do you have a totem summoned? Uh, we didn't crit, uh, so this that is here because uh, of critical strike chance enchant on our boots. Because we aren't critting actually, the totems are doing the job for us, so this buff is up all the time. So, do not tick this because it will lower our critical chance. It isn't happening, you know because totems are creating not us so this is up all the time and what else is your crit chance lucky yes the enemy is ignited you know burn for from that combustion so that is important so remember to check that shaper guardian uh, cover in ash from our ascension we talked about earlier So remember to check those and also check this if you have Battle Fate, so you can see your damage numbers. And also check Sand Stance, but it doesn't matter. This is for defensive. And that's about it, yeah. So, overall, the build is very powerful, a very solid hardcore character. Um, I would have, you know, pushed higher level if I didn't die to detonate bullshit. Um, I only got like close to dying three times. Uh, one was also another detonate. Um, one was a very juicy metamorph. That was my fault actually. Uh, so yeah, metamorph. And one time I was about to die in Poor Joy Asylum, the tier 14 one, you know, it is higher. So Poor Joy is a hard map because there is like a high monster damage, you know, multiplier inside. So that's why. So I got like three times, you know, close calls. Uh, so the build is overall very tanky. Um, has decent, you know, boss damage compared, you know, my gear isn't that um, good. So if you are playing this on softcore, you will have way more DPS. So you will just destroy every boss. So there should be a clips uh, at the start of the video or maybe I'm gonna show them now. I don't know. I didn't decide yet. So watch those if you haven't to see what's going on with the bosses. And yeah, that's a very solid character. So if you are you know interested in playing War Chief, just go for it. Very fun playstyle. And that's about it. So thanks for watching. And leave a comment um, if you have any questions. And I will answer if, if I know the answer. <laughs> yeah. So, goodbye. Take care.